Okay. Um, <coughs> well, it's, uh, it's good to be here. I think it's worth just saying hello to all the people online. Um, I know there's actually quite a, quite a lot of people that are unwell at the moment. Um, uh, I know that I think Tanya and Marie have got COVID, I think. Is that right, little Sonny? Um, Sonny doesn't know. There we are. And uh, the Greenwoods have had a sick bug, and I know there's quite a few other families, a few people, Sally Flanagan, text me. There's, I've had flu this week, or some kind of flu, man flu, obviously, um, this week. So I'm, I'm still not quite fully recovered. My head's still a little bit spinny. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's been a bit going around. But there's, I know Hannah's unwell at home, isn't she? Um, so there's quite a few people that are away. Um, and obviously, hopefully some people will catch up and watch this online. Um, as Mark said, I think... Uh, we have a kind of a philosophy at the River Church, which is that we try and avoid uh, getting too sucked into, you know, big new ideas, um, if that's the right phrase, because, uh, you know, I'm temp I'm, my temptation is to get into big new ideas. Um, but the trouble is big new ideas, um, particularly if they're not from the Lord, they just fall flat on their face. Um, but what we do try and do, as Mark said, is just identify what is it God is doing how is God leading us as a church family uh, and just trying to speak into that a little bit and sort of saying, this is what we believe the Lord is doing. You know, we believe God is doing it. We're not just kind of saying, right, we've decided we ought to do this. Um, and so that's what I want to share a little bit this morning. Uh, I want to share a little bit of our story, uh, where we've come from, where we're up to today, and I think maybe where God might be taking us over the next kind of year. I'll try and do that in about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll let Pat talk about some figures and some numbers. Um, so uh, the church now, if, and if you're haven't been aware. The church has been going, for some of you, you've only been here for just over a year, uh, but the church kind of originated uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, you see that little photo there? John is looking significantly thinner with plenty more hair. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and there was 15 of us. We started something called Ramsden Family Church 15 years ago. There was 15 people, I think, at its, its conception. It was a bit of a, didn't know quite what it was that back then. I think there's only six people that are now in the church, that were in the church, that's Mark and Alice, Helen and I, although Helen and I had a seven-year break at Eltham, uh, and Terry and Hannah, um, so they're, they're the originals. And so when we started, and this is quite important, right? when we started, we were just a really small group. Uh, we did everything as a small family, we operated as a small little group, uh, we thought like a small group, we behaved like a small group, and slowly over the years, Different people joined and came along. Esther and I think Andy were quite there. Uh, and then we moved. They moved to the to uh, another youth centre down, and they became uh, the River Church. Um, and a few more people joined, like Joel and Zayn, I think, joined in that season. And and then a few more people joined, and it got a little bit bigger. And basically, um, it was uh, it was a small group. And so that has been very significant in the way that we've kind of grown up as a, as a church. We've basically been in a small mindset kind of church that that's kind of what we've been and things have begin have begun to change a little bit and I think that's part of what we're working through and thinking through now the vision of or, or the heart of River Church really flowed out of I think a prophetic word that was all based around uh, the picture of Ezekiel chapter 47 so if you know your Bible um, there's a story in Ezekiel where there's a, uh, a throne the throne of God and from that flows a river and wherever the river goes, and it starts out, the river starts quite narrow and quite small. And slowly but surely, the river gets wider and wider and deeper and deeper. And the, and the story is, as the river expands, it goes out and reaches out. And everything that surrounds the river begins to find life and grow. And so really, everything that we are trying to do, what we believe as a church, is that as the river church goes out, so God brings life. As the River Church connects and touches a wider and wider base of people and places, so God brings life. And essentially, that's our heart. That's what we want to do. We want to be a life-giving church. Whatever we're doing, wherever we are, we want to see God bringing life. But uh, I was reminded of a picture that uh, I've, some of you will know a guy called Martin Charles. Who knows Martin Charles? Uh, Martin's a friend of mine, and Martin's got a real prophetic gift. Uh, that means he sees things in the spirit. Uh, and a few years ago, 2015 it was, he sent me a picture. I was still at Elton, wasn't in the church at the time. And he sent me a picture and he said, Tim, I've had this picture of a river. I wasn't even in this church at the time. Uh, but the Lord has really made me aware that this was really a word. You know, sometimes God speaks 
years ahead of what it is that he's going to do. And he sent me a picture. He sent me this picture. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, it's the picture of a river coming off the side of a mountain. And he basically get, sent me this picture and he said, uh, there was this mountain, had this picture, this vision of a, mount, uh, a river in the mountains. And in the mountains, we went up uh, recently, didn't we, to the Alps in, in a few, got to get my cycling trip in as many times to as many sermons as possible. Um, but if you've ever been up to the Alps and you see rivers up in the mountains, they're very beautiful, aren't they? They're very beautiful rivers up in the mountains. They're all, you know, weaving through the kind of lovely green grass and there's flowers to the side and the odd sheep. And there was this picture, Mike said there was this picture of a river in a beautiful little place. But then what happened is the river essentially started to go over a cliff and all of a sudden this river began to spread out and accelerate and widen. And what happens when the river goes out and goes wider is that everything begins to change. And actually the river isn't as pretty it's not as nice, it's not as easy uh, in that regard. It's a little bit more uh, complicated, but so many more people are being blessed by the river than it was up in the mountain. And, and really, if I'm honest, this picture speaks to the experience of what's happened to us over the last couple of years. So when we joined the church four and a half years ago, the church was about uh, 50 to 60 people, and it was up, it was up in the mountain. It was lovely. Everybody knew each other. Everyone kind of went around each other's house. I think we had like, what, one or two house groups, that kind of thing. Um, it was all very easy. We could come together on Sunday. There was, you didn't need a welcome team, really. Everyone just sort of stood on the door because everybody was in the welcome team. Uh, you know, uh, John and Ruth obviously organised the refreshments properly, but they didn't have to worry about that. It was a handful of cups, wasn't it? And, you know, biscuits didn't get eaten at a rate of, uh, you know, one pack per minute. Um, and it, life was easy. It was, it was small church. And what's happened to us as a church is that over the, law, the course of the last couple of years, we've gone from about 50 or 60 people to 160 to 170 people. And it doesn't show any signs of slowing down because God is beginning to move. And more and more people are being blessed and more and more people are being touched. And that's not something that, you know, if someone came to me and said, Tim, what's been your plan and your strategy for growth? And I'd say, I don't know. We haven't particularly, have we, done anything massively different to than we did before. But God has begun to move. And God has begun to change things. But that has had an impact on where we're at as a church. It's impacted because we've realized that everything we do is orientated around being a small group. Because that's all we've ever known. We don't really have much experience of being bigger and having to organize things. And we want everything to be just like it was. Now, the problem with rivers, if you, you know, those of you that have been down to the Thames, big rivers all right, are not as pretty, are they? But they're way more effective. And they impact a significantly more, more number of people. And that, I believe, is what the Lord has called us to do and to be about. And, and so really, if I were to say to you, what do I think God wants for our church over the next 20 years, right? That's a ridiculously long time period, right? Okay, all right. And we know that Jim will still be going in 20 years. That's fine. Don't worry, Jim. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, I'm picking a number. But I believe that God is bringing all of these people. We've been so blessed over the last couple of years with just some absolutely amazing people that have joined the church. And God has called and gathered a group of people together. And the question we're asking is, why, God, have you gathered all of these people together? And it's for this reason, I believe, that God wants to use us to be a church which, over generations, sends people for the gospel. Sends people for the gospel. And so, really, we shared this, was it in, in 2019, I think, and it, it's it's really simple. Uh, it's our, our heart, our vision as a church is we seek to send ordinary people. That's quite important. We're not sending the best or the most important or the cleverest. We're just sending ordinary chaps and ladies like you and me, right? And we are believing out into our community, out across the UK, around the world to share the gospel and to build up Christ's church. And you might think to yourself, Tim, Surely that's what every church should be doing. Yes, yes it is. And if you look at the Grace Commission, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, it says, go into the world, tell, you know, go into the world, make disciples, doesn't it? Baptise them in the name of Jesus. And really, you know, we're not doing anything clever. 
not trying to do anything particularly spectacular or different, right? But we are seeking to just live out the Great Commission. And really, and this is the key, everything that we want to do, when we look at the reason we've got our young people, the reason you're sat here this morning, is because we believe that all of these young people, that God wants to send you, God wants to send you, whether it's locally, nationally, internationally, for the gospel. Now, even if you're an older person here, if you're over 50, there's still time God wants to send you. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to be sent? Well, first of all, everybody is sent. So there's no good saying, ah, well, Tim, ah, absolutely, we'll send out those young people. Maxine, the Lord's got a great plan for you. You'll go out to the middle of nowhere and serve the Lord. We'll just worry about Maxine. No, every single one of us is to be sent. Amen? And we believe that, that, that this church should be about resourcing and equipping every single person here to be sent wherever God calls them, to whoever God calls them. And so that's when we talk about being sent. We want to see people sent, there's my clicker, locally, nationally, internationally. And, and so most of us are going to be sent locally, but we also believe that in time, this church can be a church that plants churches, that sends people out, and maybe even sends people abroad. I mean, for years... We were privileged to be part of a church in Elton, which sent many people, didn't it, abroad, uh, over places like Africa and that kind of stuff. And maybe the Lord, we believe the Lord will do that again. And, and if that's our heart, if that's our call, if that's our vision, then everything we need to do orientates and fixates and works towards how are we preparing people and inputting people in order that God might send them. And so really simply, we are trying to see people get saved See people get strengthened in the Lord and sent out. That is our call. That is our mission. That is my life's call. And I said to Patrick the other day when I was just chatting to him on the phone, I said, if I get, if you and I sit down, you know, maybe again where we're, we're on holiday somewhere, and we're in our 60s and our 70s, and we look around and we can point to churches that have been planted out of this church, people that are serving abroad, people that are serving in the workplace. And this is real. I just want to highlight this before we get there. I believe that God wants to send people in their workplaces, in their charity work. And they may say, I come to River Church and it's where I find family and I find home, but God releases me in my workplace or in my mission locally. Amen. And I want to sit when I'm in, you know, 25 years time, I want to sit down and I want to be able to look and see what God has sent all these people over the world. Amen. And we want to work towards that. We want to be a church that says, come, let God save you if you don't know Jesus. Let God deal with you, strengthen you in order that we may, that the Lord may then send you out onto the mission field. And the thing about this kind of mission, right, is that, um, that the first thing about this, this mission is that it's really about building his kingdom, not our little kingdom. Now, many people, when, you, when I've been to vision talks by other churches, um, not, not churches I've been part of, just want to make clear um, but other churches that I hear so often I've heard people say this to me uh, that church vision talks are really just uh, focused around growing the church I remember chatting to a friend of mine he said every year we had a vision of a thousand person church and he said after 10 years we're still 150 people and it gets a bit depressing and so every vision talk just turns into another you know, kind of push from the leadership to get more money, to get more time, to get more investment, so that simply we can grow the church and the church can just be bigger. Well, what's the point? If this church goes to a thousand people, why? What's the point? Right? Just if it's, particularly if it's people that have come from other churches, right? What's the point? Shuffling the deck? Who wants to shuffle the deck? Great. Right? That, that's, that's in and of itself, that's, that may be a good thing, but not necessarily. The thing is, when we have a vision to be a sending church, it's about building his kingdom, not just building our kingdom. Our church may never get to be huge, but if we're consistently sending people out to see the, go the gospel moved and, and to see the, sorry, see the gospel preached and the kingdom advancing, then amen, I will die a man that feels like I've spent a life that's been worth living. And the Lord wants to call you. Maybe you're sitting this morning, the Lord's going to send you. Or maybe you're going to be part of the training and the equipping and the supporting that will send others. But that's what we're about. It's about building his kingdom, not our little kingdom. The second thing about sending that I just want to talk about is that uh, the sending church endures the pain of separation. The trouble is, it's great being a sending church, but it's really hard work because we like it. And you remember my first little picture? Some of my happiest times 
weren't they, Ruth and John? We're in those early days when it was small and it was easy. And then things get bigger and God starts sending people away. It isn't nice and easy and comfortable for us. When some of our best friends have to be, you know, say, oh, I feel the Lord's called me to go and plant a church down in the Isle of Sheppey. And you suddenly realise you can't be seeing them every single week. Or when someone gets sent to, across the, the world or someone says, I feel called in my, in my work to be less involved with the church and more involved in my workplace. It hurts. But that's why we know it's the right thing to do because we're doing something that is not just about what we like. We're not just building a church that's comfortable and happy and easy for us. We're building something which God is going to use to advance his kingdom and bring people to know him. So we've got to be willing to endure the pain of separation. And so ascending church, and this is what we're going to talk about just very briefly now, is a church which prepares and equips people to go. Everything we do should orientate ourselves around bringing glory to Jesus, helping people to see him so that right, we may be preparing and equipping people to go. Amen. So where are we in this journey? Well, I want to show you a picture of my apple tree. Now, I planted some trees a few years ago. Uh, I'm not much of a gardener, but I thought I would attempt. In fact, my father-in-law helped me plant some trees. I planted an apple tree about two or three years ago. And do you know what? This year, it produced some apples, would you believe? Amazing. I was quite surprised that it produced apples. But the problem was, is that when it produced apples, it something went wrong. Can anyone tell me what they think is like to have gone wrong? My picture's terrible, by the way, so this isn't going to work very well. But what happened to my poor little apple tree? It didn't die, but what happened to it? It nearly died. What happened to it? Anyone get any idea? No, not lack of water. Too many apples, and what happened to the tree? It's split in half, right? So I don't know if you can see this, right? So this was my tree, and there were loads of apples, right? And it started to grow up, and you can see it here, it's split. The main, the main tree trunk could not sustain the weight of the growth, and so it snapped. And currently, it looks like this. Uh, you can see my father-in-law has propped up a piece of decking against it in the hope that somehow it will heal itself. I think that's unlikely, right? I think it's unlikely. My tree may have died. Don't worry, Jen, it's only a tree. All right, don't. I know you look very you look distraught there about the tree. But I thought this is a bit of a metaphor, I think, for where we're at, at as a church. The church has begun to produce fruit. And if we, you know, brilliant, the church is producing fruit. And so you say, well, okay, let's just send everybody else now. But if we did that, right, then A, I don't think we produce much fruit year on year. I think the Lord wants us to be a, ch a church that produces fruit year on year on year. But the problem at the moment is, is that we are cracking. I just want to tell you that as leaders, right, we are tired, really tired, uh, because it's been a really hard few years. And, and we, we're all right, you know, we're keeping going, but it's tough. Uh, it's been difficult because what's happened is that God has grown the church We've gone from 60 to 160 really quickly. The water's piled off the edge of the mountain and we're scrabbling around trying to get ourselves into a position where we can kind of care for everybody. And of course, new people come in. It's brilliant, but many of you, as you know, have come and the Lord brought you here because you weren't necessarily in tip-top condition and you needed some support. And that's what we've done. But if we are to be sustainable and to send over periods of time, we're going to have to go through a season of strengthening the, tri strengthening the tree. You, 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 see, you get the picture, yeah? Because if we don't, we'll, do, we'll send once and that'll be it. We'll, we'll manage, we'll be good for a couple of years. But I believe the Lord's got a plan and purpose to do it over a long period of time. And so really, that's going to be our focus for the next year at least, maybe the next couple of years, is that we need to focus on strengthening the main stuff in order that we can send. Because the trouble is, if we, were to, if we were to send today, there are people that could go today. But if we did that, we would lose good home group leaders and then who's going to look after the people in the home groups? You know, we'd just be in a situation we haven't got the excess. We haven't got enough people to do what we're currently doing, let alone if we lost people. And so that's where we're at at the moment. And so this year, we're going to focus on a few areas. And I just want to point them out and then I'll hand over to Patrick. Um, the first is this, is that we believe really strongly that we are called this year to develop and grow more leaders. 
right? Because that's who can help to take the strain and the strength. We need to be better at helping to grow and develop leaders that can take the responsibility for people, pastorally, to take responsibility for leading and managing and running things. Very practically, if you want to have groups that operate and you know, reach out to people and people can come in, someone's got to lead those. Yeah, uh, And so we want to help our leaders not just shove any old bod into a job just to fill a gap, but to really support and equip and train people in doing that well. And so we're going to start a, a leadership training program that's going to, uh, I, I won't say exactly how we're going to do it because we need to just make sure we're clear on what we're going to do. But that's going to be a focus this year through mentoring and through training if we possibly can. Um, the second is a greater investment in our young people. We really believe that our young people, I, I, I want to get cheesy, we believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Um, but there's so much truth in it, isn't there? Right, I was sat here a few weeks ago and um, I had this little moment where uh, uh, John, you know, John and Heidi were having their uh, little, little Zachary, little baby Zachary dedicated and, and John's parents were sat there, John, uh, Stephen and Greenall. And I just had this moment where I realised that they would have remembered me Right, I haven't really been in the same church then, or been in church with them probably for like 20, 30 years. In this moment where like, they would have remembered me as that irritating little boy, and I was irritating. Um, I think they banned me from their house at one point um, because I was so naughty. Um, and, and there they are, sitting, listening to me have to preach. And I look at you annoying little ones, right, particularly Arwen. Um, <laughs> and I look and I think to myself, look what the Lord is going to do in you. Amen. And so we need to continue to invest, not just in our young people, but in our threes to sixes groups and our um, uh, year, what's the other grade? Sevens to elevens, that's it, yeah. And we, it, we're getting so many kids. Do you know we've got over 60 kids in the church now? It's a lot for a church of our size. And so we are going to need people, not just leaders that are happy to help, but leaders that really have got a passion and a heart to teach kids, to, to lead them and to show them Jesus. Amen. Uh, we want to continue to increase diversity. We, I, I don't just talk about diversity. I really believe in it. I really believe that this church should reflect the local community and the glory of God. And so I'd love to see more people in leadership from all different backgrounds, from uh, different experiences, in order that the church might be richer for it. Okay, so we're going to continue to invest in diversity. This is probably the one of the second to the leadership one, almost the most important one. And I've put it here because, to be honest, it's the most boring one. But it's probably for us. We need to become operationally and effective and sustainable. To sum up us as an organisation, announcing that the newsletter for September is now available, the last week in September is probably a good description of, our, of, of where we're up to in the administrative side of church life. Yeah? Not great, is it? Right? It's not great. And what's happening is there's loads of people doing lo The same people are doing lots and lots of stuff. And the trouble is we're just not... It feels like we're chasing our tail a lot of the time. And it's the same people who are very faithful who are doing the same things. And, and I just want you to hear, hear me right when I say this. This is not a criticism. If you are not involved in stuff, this is not a, oi, you. All right? It's just a simple statement of, of truth that actually God wants to enlarge the number of people that are involved. All right, and so we want to become effective and sustainable because at the moment we are not that effective and we're not super sustainable. So we've got to get to that point. If in a year's time we're still going, oh, here's September's newsletter on the 25th of September, uh, we're doing something wrong. Okay, uh, and Pat, I think, is going to talk about that lastly. Now, lastly, but actually, it's fifth, but yet most important in all of this. When we talk about strengthening the tree trunk and all the rest of it, there's a temptation to just look at inwardly, yeah, to look inside the church. But the problem is there's still a world that desperately needs Jesus. And so in this all, we have to keep pushing ourselves to say, how are we reaching out? How are we sharing the gospel? Who here enjoyed our conference not ashamed of the gospel? Put your hand up in the air if you enjoyed it. Who here would believe themselves to say, yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel? Amen. Put your hand up. If you're not ashamed of the gospel, amen. Brilliant. 8th of October, I want to see you on the streets with Marlene. 
No, no, I'm not messing. Right, I won't be there, by the way, because I'm away. Um, <laughs> uh, in, in all seriousness, I'm actually away. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm away doing my MLG work uh, for the next couple of weekends. If I'm, I, by the way, I'm not here for the next couple of weekends. What, next weekend, I'm in Chester. Weekend, I'm up in, in Devon. But Marlene came to me and she said, I want to do some street outreach. I want to do some door-to-door uh, and some sort of standing around in the streets and talking, telling people about Jesus. And do you want to know what my initial reaction was? Oh, dear. Because <laughs> nobody does. Let's be honest, unless you're Marlene or Dion or maybe people that are particularly orientated around that way, right? Yeah, we naturally think to ourselves, brilliant, Marlene, you go out and do that, right? You go off and do that. But the reality is, is we need to tell people about Jesus. If Jesus has done something in your life, you need to be telling someone about it. And so, like, I particularly, like, if you're really brave, you can do the door-to-door. I'll let you off that one. But if we're going to get together, let's try and make an effort over the next few months, if you're available, to go out with Marlene. Let's take 10, 15, 20 of us onto the streets And all right, it may not be effective. No one may come to know to Jesus. We know that street evangelism is not a great way of telling people about Jesus. But God, I don't think is that interested in that. God's interested in your heart. And if you're willing to say, do you know what, I'll stand and be counted. I think God will just continue to bring people who who need the Lord. And that's what we've experienced. When we've done evangelism, it's never often the way that people don't often get saved through the thing you do. They get saved from somewhere else. But God, I think, just looks at our hearts and says, you know, are these people actually willing to stand up and say, I'll be counted? Right. And so it's not, don't mishear me, it's not a, if you're not there on the 8th of October, I'll take a register. Well, I won't because I won't be there. Um, but, but, you know, I'm not going to take, no one's going to take a register and say, oh, you weren't there. But really our heart and our attitude is, Am I willing? I'm not ashamed. I'm going to go and tell, just be about, even if I'm just standing on the streets hiding behind Enoch and his piano, right? At least I'm going to be there, right? And so I think we've just got to keep, in every way possible, keep trying to tell people about Jesus. Because that's really how we're going to send people. We've got to see God save them first. It's no good just saying, oh, we'll strengthen them when they come in, but we're not going to do any of that bit. All right? Anyway, so very just lastly, sorry, Pat, I've just taken too much time. Um, but yeah, these, if you are able, if you are able to help in setting up, setting down, welcome, refreshments, tech, these guys, can I just say, they're amazing, aren't they? And Constantine. Oh, they're going to get a little clap. But they, they have to do it every single week. Every single week they hide behind those plants. <laughs> Not because they want to, right? Dion, every week, turns up at 9 o'clock and helps set up all the chairs in ridiculous formations. <laughs> And, and, and John Ruth, every week, 9 o'clock, and there's people here till half past 2, and you swan off out the door at 12.33, right? There's people that are still for another hour and a half still here, cleaning up. And so if you're able to help, we really appreciate it. But also, if you're able to help with things like social media, kids' work, evangelism, well, we know you'll all be there now, um, home groups, prayer ministry, then come and talk to us. We would love you to be more involved. If you think, yeah, I've got capacity, I can be more involved. We'd love that. And so, um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit at the heart of the church, um, a little bit about what we're trying to do, where we're trying to go, what we believe God is doing, and just hopefully the Lord has encouraged you and spoken to you. Amen. Good.